no matter what the subject area is, I think the Freyer model helps kids get the concept and think about it at a deeper level. You know, we can all remember looking up definitions and dictionaries and writing them down and memorizing them. And we don't want kids to just repeat dictionary answers. We want them to really be able to analyze the concepts and be able to use them. Okay, so today we're gonna to use the Freyer model. Let's kind of review what the Freyer model is. Um, we're gonna use propaganda because that's the concept that we've been talking about. And a Freyer model is really just a concept map with some specific things that we need to look at. When it's asking for essential characteristics, what's it looking for? What are we looking for? Things that are needed. Okay, things, things that, that are needed. needed. What's a non-essential characteristic? Things that it doesn't need but you couldn't use. Right. Doesn't absolutely have to have it, but you know what? Sometimes it does have it. Examples and non-examples, what would those be? An example is something that is propaganda, and a non-example is something that isn't propaganda. Okay, and let's kind of have a reminder here. We know propaganda is not a chair. Okay? So, writing down that propaganda is not a chair, is not a car, that's not helpful. What are we really looking for? Things that aren't propaganda but could be easily confused with them. Exactly. Things that people might confuse that it is propaganda. I want you to be able to analyze, you know, to put, pull it apart what propaganda is, and that's what the essential characteristics and non-characteristics um, boxes do. The bottom two boxes allow you to synthesize the information. It actually lets you um, do something with your knowledge. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hand these papers out to you and we're actually going to do a think pair share. Okay. So the thinking part is I'm going to give you time to fill this out on your own. Think about it for yourself. Okay. Then I'm going to have you pair up with the person at your table, the person who's next to you to be able to talk it out and see if you'll bounce your ideas off each other. And then we're going to share out and actually fill this out together as a class. Kind of stuck. All right, let's see what we can do. Okay. Does one box look easier to fill out than others? What box? I see some of you using different strategies to fill it out. If you're having problems with one box, it's okay to skip around to other boxes <coughs> to fill in the ones that you can think of. I think you're trying to make it hard. What are some things that it can have sometimes, but not always? If you're having problems with coming up with essential characteristics, you can pull out your triple entry vocabulary journal and look at the definition for propaganda and see if that helps you. I'm going to give you time to turn and talk to a person at your table. Okay. Um, what you want to do is share the information that you have down because you might say, oh yeah, I didn't think of that. Oh yeah, I'm going to add that. It's okay to add information. The other thing is some, th your partner might have something that you go, um, I don't agree with that. Okay? You can't just say, yeah, no. You have to say, you know, I don't agree with that because, have some support for why you don't agree with it. And you might say, you know what, I think that is an essential characteristic. I think that would be better under the non-essential characteristics. It's okay to move your information around through the boxes. Okay. Any questions about what you're going to do? All right, go ahead and turn and talk to your partner. No. All right. I don't. Non-essential. I said non-essential. Wasn't essential for it to be good or bad. I said unusual and Why? Just because. Oh. And then I have all of the propaganda techniques.
from because these are used in propaganda, but they don't have to be used in every single way. What do you have? Okay. So where that you put it over here instead? Oh, I like that. I wouldn't have thought to use that word, convincing. Why? Okay. I think he supported that well. So let's start with the essential characteristics. What are some things that propaganda absolutely has to have? Dustin. It has to be convincing. Okay. Do you agree with that? It has to be convincing? To have a biased opinion. Okay. It is always biased. Okay? So she said biased opinion. Okay. Great. It has to have a goal in mind. It has to have a goal. There's a reason for it. Did anybody else have any non-essential characteristics that we didn't cover? What do you have? An emotional connection. An emotional connection. So newspaper would be an example. <coughs> okay, what else do we have for examples? Political campaigns. Political campaigns. Okay, just because it's a movie doesn't mean it's propaganda. Okay, did this help you? How did it help you? Made you think about it more? How? Maybe you come up with like stuff that it has to have and stuff that doesn't necessarily need to have. Okay. Sort of organized everything. Okay, it did organize things. Kind of organized your thinking. How else did it help you? It kind of like separated the definition in parts. So it wasn't just one kind of definition. Okay. I think, you know, being able to see that sometimes it has these things, you know, and can still be propaganda without me, you know, thinking it always has to be there. It gave us a more in-depth understanding. I think it did give you a more in-depth understanding. Instead of just being able to quote me the definition, you know, of what propaganda is, I think you get more ownership out of it. That you had to think and process through. I think the Frayer model worked really well with the kids today because I know that they all could give me a definition for the concept of propaganda and I wanted more than a definition. The Frayer model was an excellent scaffold to move on to having the kids analyze pieces of propaganda on their own. I knew they had the foundation that they needed, that they knew what propaganda was and they knew examples of propaganda and they could look for things that it sometimes has, you know, the non-essential characteristics. I think the Frayer model helped organize me teaching today because it's not the sage on the stage. I don't have to stand up and say everything. It helps get the conversation going with the students. It helps get their ideas involved instead of me planting the ideas in their head. They come up with them themselves.